gentlemen, welcome to our series of TV lessons. We are going to present a series of TV lessons which are going to cover the whole program of fourth year secondary education. We do hope that these lessons are going to be of much help to you. Well, I'm going to start with uh, the first lesson, of course, and we are going to start with a guessing game. So look at this picture and guess the topic of my lesson. Let's do it. So what can you see in this picture? We have two ice boxes here, a beach umbrella, a family driving somewhere. Uh, they are going maybe to the seaside. I hope you have guessed right. Well, they are doing so because they have some days off, no school for the kids and parents are not on duty. So they are on have you guessed the word? My lesson is going to be about vacations, holidays, time away for entertainment, for relaxation, time away for some peace of mind. All of us, rather most of us are stressed and are tired of the city and we need some time away that is going to bring us to a smile, don't we? Okay, so Let's read the following poem and see to what extent it relates to our topic. On vacation. In my head, I hear a humming. Summer, summer, summer's coming. Soon we're going on a vacation, but there's a complication. Day by day, the problem's growing. We don't know yet where we're going. Mother likes the country best. That is, so she can read and rest. Dad thinks resting is a war. He's for fishing on the shore. Sailing is my brother's pick. Sailing makes my sister sick. She says, swimming is much more cool. Swimming in a swimming pool. As for me, why, I don't care. I'd be happy anywhere. This poem is written by Mary Ann Haberman. Now, what does the writer of this poem or the poet uh, would like us to, to know? What's this poem dealing with? What is it about? Which words are going to be my clues to understand the message in that poem? Let's look at it again. Well, uh, notice that there's a, a key word here. It's the word uh, complication. In fact, it's a complication that a mother, a dad, a brother, and a sister faced when they decided to go on a holiday. Each of these family members, of this family member, sorry, um, had a different like, a different choice. What about you now? Do you face such a complication when you decide to go for a holiday? Well, Generally speaking, we do have different likes and dislikes when we decide to go for a holiday, don't we? For example, teenagers are keen, or we can say are fond of active and adventurous holidays. Adults and elderly are keen on lazy and relaxing holidays. So here the word are fond of and keen on are interchangeable. Good. Now look at these pictures. Here's a group of kids and a teenager. Certainly, kids don't have the same likes as teenagers, do they? Also, teenagers don't share their parents' choices either. So, what should we do to reach an agreement? We should be understanding and tolerant when it's a family decision. Good. Remember the family who was uh, driving to the seaside? Well, they have just reached the seaside now. Look at them carefully. What do you notice? 
children are so excited, parents also are happy doing this activity. So, parents enjoy going to the seaside. Children enjoy going to the seaside. Have you noticed that there's a kind of repetition here? Let's try and combine these two sentences into one. Can you? Which words are you going to use to combine these two sentences? What about the word both? Are we going to say both the children and parents enjoy going to the seaside? Can we try it in another way? Can we do it in a different way? Let's see. Children as well as parents enjoy going to the seaside. Again, in a different way, it is possible for us to say not only children but also parents enjoy going to the seaside. So, the words and the expressions of both as well as not only but also are used here to combine two ways of thinking, behaving or doing things the same. Let's have another set of pictures. What do you see? These two boys are surfing, but in picture number one, the boy seems to be so terrified. Just look at his face. And in the second picture, the guy is enjoying what he is doing. So, Tom doesn't like surfing, but Tom's brother is fond of surfing. Here are two sentences. Again, we'd like to combine both sentences. Is it possible to use the words we have seen previously? Surely not. So, let's try. Which word are we going to use here? What about the word unlike? We say, unlike his brother, Tom is not fond of surfing at all. Can we do it differently? Let's see. It is possible to say, in contrast to his brother, Tom seems not to like surfing. Or, again, Tom doesn't like surfing, whereas his brother does. So, unlike, in contrast to, and whereas are words and expressions to talk about a contrast in a sentence. Good. Now, the following is a paragraph uh, and uh, we are providing you with a list of words. Your task is to try to fill in the blanks with the right word from the list uh, below. Let's first of all study our list of words. Here we have got a superlative form, most. Then we have got a noun, choice of course, noun from the verb to choose, canoeing as a noun also, based, notice the ed, so it's a verb in the past form, past tense, entertaining as an adjective, on, preposition, and of course the verb learn. Now let's read our paragraph and fill in the right word in the right uh, blank. Can you do it? Go on, let's do it. You may find it difficult to imagine what kind of holiday would suit you. There's a vast blank of holidays available these days, from the simplest to the blank luxurious, the peaceful to the energetic, for people of a similar age and for people of all ages. For blank number one now, the blank is preceded by an adjective, vast. What is vast? What are we talking about? We need a noun here. So, of course, we're talking about a vast choice. It's a vast choice of holidays. Then, for the second blank, the blank is followed by a long adjective. This adjective is luxurious. 
and it's a preceded by fi. So we have to complete our superlative form and we're going to say here the most luxurious. Notice that it is also preceded by another superlative form, the simplest, but this time it's with a short adjective. Good. We continue. Holidays that work well are often blank on interests or activities such as playing golf or visiting an appealing part of the world. Here, which word according to you is going to be followed by the preposition on? Have you guessed it? Of course, it's paste. So we say paste on. So here we say paste on. Holidays that work well are often based on interests or activities, such as playing golf or visiting an appealing part of the world. This provides the opportunity to playing something new and meet with a similar meet people with a similar interest. So um, here we need the certainly a verb because uh, my second part has the following and meet people so what was the other thing that we are going to do it's an opportunity to do something so it's to learn something there's no need to go away for your holiday or to spend a lot of money which word is going to suit this plank. The verb spend is going to oblige me to choose a preposition because we say spend money on something. Taking our time to join in local activities can be. How can it be? I need an adjective. So it can be entertaining. So whatever your age and whatever your dream holiday is, self-drive through mountain scenery, wildlife in its natural habitat, hiking, biking, blank, or other forms of soft adventure, plan for it and have a break from everyday routine. Here I'd like you to pay attention or to be careful to punctuation. See the commas. Wildlife in its natural habitat, comma, hiking, comma, biking, comma. Then we need uh, what follows. Of course, the same structure. We need uh, a noun, canoeing. Canoeing is another form of soft adventure. I hope you have answered the exercise right. Well, let's continue. Now we're going to plan for a holiday. And when we plan for a holiday, there are some questions, there are some things that we uh, should consider and think about. The first thing is, what do I prefer? Look at these pictures. Am I someone who is for sunshine and sandy beaches? Or am I someone who prefers cold and snowy weather? Am I for a summer vacation or a winter vacation? Then, where to go? What's my destination? Shall I go south, north, east or west? Shall I travel just inside in my native country or go abroad? Which is better? A tour I organize myself or a tour that is planned for me by a travel agent? In fact, do you know how you call such a tour? How do you call a tour that is planned for you by a travel agent? It's a, yes, it's a package tour, very good. Now, what type of holiday am I going to have? Look at the picture again. What do you see here? There's a big ship, lots of people. They are going certainly to be on board to take a cruise. Then, another picture. Here is a group of tourists. They are exploring the picturesque sceneries. They are enjoying wildlife. 
See, they are riding elephants. Fantastic. So what are they doing? They are going on a safari. Then, other people would prefer doing something else. If you look at the picture carefully, we have swimming pools so close to the sea, services provided for people here, some plastic deck chairs, uh, refreshments, and so on. They have gone to a place that offers them services to make their stay much more enjoyable. So they have gone to a seaside resort. Good. Another set of pictures. Can you recognize these places? One, of course, is Sydney in Australia. The Statue of Liberty, so we're talking about New York. Then, the Big Ben. London, of course, and Venice in Italy. Why do you think I'm showing you these pictures? It's because these places are among the most famous places around the world and lots of people dream to visit these places. They dream of going there. So, they travel abroad. These three pictures now do stand for three important things that we have to take into consideration before traveling. One, my means of transport. Which means of transport to use? Picture number two is about the budget that I have to prepare for my vacation. How much money am I going to spend? Then, picture number three, we are going to talk about where to stay while on vacation. You see here in this picture that there is a, a hotel room. Are we going to stay in a hotel room, in a campsite? Am I going to rent a house? Where am I going to stay? So I have to think about my accommodation. Very good. Also, I have to take into consideration the duration of my stay. So how long am I going to stay? And with whom? With friends, members of the family, or just by myself? We move on. What activities to do? As I have thought about the type of holiday I'm going to have, also I have to think about the activities and about my preferences there. Right. So, let's see. This person says, I prefer beach parties to art shows. He expressed his preference in the following way, and he said, I prefer something to something else. Can we express preference differently? Yes, we can. This person says, I prefer swimming to visiting an art, an art gallery. Here, we say, prefer doing something to doing something else. Do you think that there's another way of doing it? Yes. See this. I'd rather swim than visit an art gallery. So, the rule here is we'd rather do something than do something else. Let me repeat it for you. There are three ways to express your preferences. We can say prefer something to something else prefer doing something to doing something else, and would rather do something than do something else. Very good. We move on. Another set of pictures again. And you may wonder why I'm um, showing you these pictures in that order. Well, it's simply to uh, fill in this uh, poem with uh, the right uh, word. Each picture is going to refer to a word. Let's read and complete it. The summer sun in the sky, shining, shining up so high, makes it warm for outside fan to play at the park and run, to swim and hike 
and fish and to go on a picnic if you wish. Summer brings us nice warm sun for swimming, fishing and lots of fun. For finding seashells in the sand, for some bathing to get a tan. To do all these things and more at the beach and seashore. Different activities, I'm going to recapitulate them. The last one was sunbathing, then finding seashells, hiking, fishing, and so on. The poet says to do all, this, all these things and more. What are the other activities? Let's add others. What about parachuting? Or what about surfing? And of course, cycling. See this picture. Could it be an activity for summer holiday? Of course. Look at these children. They seem to be so excited and so happy being underwater, seeing the treasures of the sea. This is uh, another picture. The couple is seeing the wonders of Egypt. They are near the pyramids. This is a group of people who are dancing and listening to music. They are having a lot of fun. So activity number one is dive in. Then it's about sightseeing and of course going to a disco. Well, this picture is not here by mistake, you know. This is also another activity that we do during a holiday. Remember, we have been talking about either summer or winter vacation. So here's an activity that we can perform during winter. Look at these kids. What are they doing? Have you guessed it? I hope so. This is ice skating. Is ice skating the only activity that we can do during winter? Of course not. Just look at this picture. We can also go skiing. Good. My last picture is about um, a couple here who is um, enjoying visiting an art gallery. We shouldn't forget that visiting an art gallery or a museum or things like that, art shows are a part or an activity during a holiday. Good. Right, what do you see here? In this picture, we see that there are lots of people at the seashore, some boats, and here a refreshment center. Notice that people are fully clothed. Next, another seaside, but much more crowded. People are sitting on their uh, wooden deck chairs. They are reading novels, magazines. Some are even sleeping or having a nap. Um, notice also that these people are uh, fully clothed. And there's even uh, uh, a person here wearing a suit and a tie, a bit strange as a dressing for the seaside. Then, here, uh, the seaside seems to be so deserted. Very, very few people are there. Maybe because they are entertaining themselves differently. Then, in this picture, we uh, see also a lot of people. Some beach umbrellas. People are sunbathing, others are swimming. Um, kids are playing with their toys. So, what do you notice? Which conclusions can we have here? We notice that uh, there's a big difference between these pictures. And this difference is because these pictures were, or photographs were taken at different periods of time. Yes. Bear in mind that I'm, go that I'm talking here about the same place. See how enormous the change 
has been. Now, there's a lot of, there are lots of differences, so we say that there are lots of changes and this is because this picture was taken on 2002, the other one on 1956, 1901, and 1850. From 1850 till 2002, lots of things happened, lots of things changed. So, let's read a text about this. And we are going to find out about holidays in the past and holidays nowadays. You are going to try to read this text with me and fill in the chart below. Holidays now and holidays in the past. Let's read. In the last 50 years, the term holiday has come to mean completely different things to the children from each generation. People did go away, but it tended to be to visit relatives. If you talk to many children today, they regard a holiday as a week or even two weeks away from home, visiting coastal resorts or even traveling abroad. Phil Smith, 76, said, holidays were not in plenty in those days, not because there were no holidays available. There were no packages or things that we get today. There were mainly day trips. We used to make our own entertainment. In place of actual holidays, local festivals and fairs were a very important relaxation in past times. There were no travel agents or high street shops like today, and certainly no flying like now. Now, which idea can we pick out from this text to fill in the first part of the chart about holidays now? Of course, I'm going to refer to this part when it says, um, when it talks about the present, of course, asking children today, if you talk to many children today, so here I'm identifying myself in the present, they regard a holiday as a week or even two weeks away from home, doing what? Visiting coastal resorts or even traveling abroad. So, visiting coastal resorts is my first answer and the second thing is traveling abroad. Now, second part, holidays in the past. I'm going to refer, of course, to Phil Smith, 76. He's old enough to tell us about holidays in the past. He says that there were no packages or things like that, that there were no travel agents. He said very important things. He said that local festivals and fairs were a very important relaxation in past times. And also, the text mentioned that people did go away. Are you following with me? That's in line number two in the text. People did go away, but it tended it tended, sorry, to be to visit relatives. So idea number one, visiting relatives. Idea number two, that local festivals and fair were a very important relaxation at that time. Again, here we are emphasizing the change that occurred, the change that we have seen in the pictures. Then, how did people use to spend their holidays 50 years ago? Did they used to go abroad? Well, certainly not, of course. Phil Smith said that there were no travel agents or high street shops like today, and certainly no flying like now. So, people used to make their own entertainment in those days. People used to visit relatives. But, now they travel abroad and they see the world. Have you noticed uh, the words here that are in red? Which expression, which word am I repeating here and asking questions and answering them? That's the word 
That's the modal verb used to. What does it indicate? See the change? I'm saying, but now. So there's something different. It's talking about something that took place in the past and finished in the past. So, used to, the affirmative form, is used plus an infinitive to talk about past habits which are now finished. Let me provide you with another example. When we were children, we used to spend our holidays on a farm. But now, we usually go to a seaside resort. So, we no longer spend our holiday on a farm. How is it possible for us to use this structure in the negative? Right. The negative of used to is normally didn't use to or did not use to. An example, people didn't use to travel abroad for a holiday. Instead, local festivals and fairs were a very important relaxation in past times. Now, after dealing with used to in the affirmative form and in the negative form, uh, we are going to uh, read uh, uh, a poem uh, and we are going to try to fill in the blanks with the right uh, words. Of course, this poem uh, is in relation to our topic. Uh, remember, we're talking about holidays. We're talking about going on a vacation, either during summer or winter. Uh, we have been talking so far about uh, uh, different types of holidays, different activities we do on holiday, uh, different preferences, how people face complications sometimes about uh, what to choose, what to do, and where to go. So, uh, let's see uh, how this poem relates also to our uh, topic and try to uh, fill in the right word in the right uh, place. Let's read. I think I need a blank a little time away from the hustling bustling struggle of the day today. I'm getting blank of the city. My body is feeling blank. I think my number is up to go away and get me some. I need me some time, some time to bring me to a smile every once in a while. So I'm gonna get some blank of mind. Now I enjoy what I do for a living working and working like a man who was driven by the powers that be, and for a time I find it suits me well. The first part, now the first part, I think I need a blank a little time away. Let's have a look at my list. Which words am I going to choose? What do I need? Do I need, uh, can I put the word tired here, for example? Of course not. I need a uh, something. So I need a noun. Have I got a noun in my list? Let's see. Yes, I do have vacation as a noun, and I do have the word peace and also the word rest. Challenging, isn't it? So which word am I going to choose here? Am I going to choose vacation, peace, or rest? Is it correct to say, I think I need a peace a little time away? Or I think I need a vacation a little time away? Or I think I need a rest a little time away? Well, I think I need a vacation. It's a time away. For what? And why do we have time away? We do have time away from the hustling, bustling struggle of the day today. Yes, we are living in cities and we are all the time rushing and we are in a hurry. So here, I'm getting of the city. How am I getting? Am I getting tired? Am I getting peace, stressed, stressed? Which word am I going to choose again? Of course, I need an adjective to describe myself. I'm getting. Tired. 
And how's my body feeling? My body is feeling another adjective. In the list here, I have got a noun, an adjective, and another noun. So very easy to do. I'm going to choose the word stressed. My body is feeling stressed. That's a true. Yeah. Well, in fact, this is the main reason why people go on a holiday. They would like to have a change. They'd like to have some time for relaxation and to enjoy themselves, to entertain themselves and have a lot of time with their kids. Some families do go away or, uh, sorry, some families do uh, travel for a long day, uh, sometimes for long days without seeing their children and the holiday is a good opportunity for them to have fun together. Uh, well, um, I think that all of us are facing the same situation. Uh, you may listening to me I th and say, yes, my dad and mom are working all the time and I don't have the time to, to see them as often as I can. I think my number is at to go away and get me some, some what? Of course, some rest. Then. I need me some time to bring me to a smile every once in a while. It's so nice to bring oneself to a smile. So I'm going to get some, some what? Some peace of mind. Now I enjoy what I do for a living, working and working like a man who was driven by the powers that be. And for a time, I find it suits me well. The second part of that poem, I'll go the difficult road to hell. I don't mind, cause when I'm done I know. I'm gonna get myself to where the pace of life is nice and slow. See how nice the words are? I need me some time, some time to bring me to a smile every once in a while. So, I'm going to get some peace of mind. Maybe I'll go to the blank. Where can you go? Of course, we'll go to the ocean, but what for? And dig my feet in the sand, lay my body on the... Of course, you lay your body on the beach and see if I can soak up the... Also, I need a noun here, so I saw Capitan. And here we mean that you are sunbathing, you're changing colors if you want. Go on and show me a river with lots of trees all around. And I will show you a man who knows that nothing's gonna keep him down. I need me some time to bring me to a smile every once in a while. I hope you have enjoyed this poem. If you did, then you can download it. Uh, this is a, a poem uh, which is in fact a song by Mireya Aurek. So if you want to listen to it, just download it from your uh, and uh, have a fun. Well, now in front of you here, there's a, a, a paragraph and uh, we'd like also to fill in the blanks with the right words uh, from uh, the list given.